Well, every country has a context. So let's talk about Pakistan's context and microfinance. Uh, there are both pros and cons. The good news is that we have an excellent legislation. Uh, we have a very forward-looking legislator that is very networked into the sector, and uh, we have a special uh, microfinance ordinance with a, a separate um, uh, you know, team within the central bank, the State Bank of Pakistan, that provides the oversight. So the infrastructure on the back end for the sector is pretty strong. We also have a very good network uh, that has been doing very good research-oriented work. Uh, that has also been lobbying and advocating policy and regulatory level issues. We also have different models. There's not just one way of doing microfinance in Pakistan. You have the rural support programs that do more integrated development and microfinance as part of it. You have specialized uh, NGO MFIs uh, like the Kash Foundation that is at the pioneering uh, end of new uh, innovation in the sector. And then you have a whole set of microfinance bank there, banks. There are eight of them, uh, uh, the, the Kash Microfinance Bank being the seventh. So there's myriad uh, and a dynamic growing sector. However, of course, there are many challenges in the sector as well. Uh, we've had the economic crisis. And in Pakistan, the economic crisis manifested itself particularly in rapidly increasing uh, food prices. Last year, in August 2008, the food prices grew to 34%. Now, that affects the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, what we began to see, and we did a research on this with our clients to understand, was this having a play on their ability to absorb financial services, in, in this case, uh, credit, their ability to save, and third, in terms of their ability to make repayments. So what impact was this having, uh, both on the financial side and then on the human side? On a human side, what did it mean in terms of food security, in terms of access to other basic services? And we began to realize that uh, the it was a mixed bag. Uh, clients who had uh, who were already linked to uh, who were doing petty trading or commodity trading or selling and buying food, they had indexed their revenues to the rise in inflation. However, on the other hand, they were spending more as a percentage of their budget on food. Three years ago, we did a research and we saw that 55% of the household budget went on uh, food. Last year, when we did this in August, 68% of the budget was going on food. So what we began to see is that a greater portion, proportion of uh, income was going into food, which meant other things were having to go down. If they had debt obligations, obviously that became a priority to repay that. And then when we asked them, what were you doing? What are you doing to manage this deficit, this growing deficit? People, 75% of our clients that we interviewed said, we are eating less. Uh, the number of days that we are going hungry are increasing. Some of them even said that we've picked up our children from school and we are putting them um, into uh, work environments. So the play of the economic, macroeconomic crisis was very high on the bottom of the pyramid. And that uh, has manifested itself in a very slow growth in the uh, sector this year. The sector has only grown at 1% over the past nine months since 2009. The other was the rising cost of borrowing, as I shared with you earlier, which uh, basically we did just were unable to raise funds on the commercial markets. And one had to rely more on the apex organization to raise funds and their ability to provide additional funds for the sector to grow over less. Now let's talk about the deposit side. Um, on the deposit side, it's been very promising. If you can get your business model right, and if you can make it affordable for poor people, if you come up with the products that really, really meet their needs and are client-centric, you can actually sweep the market. We just started savings, as I shared with you, in June 2009. And the results that we've had are phenomenal. In three and a half months, we have been able to raise $1 million as deposits. And we were able to open 28,000 accounts. So we feel once we are able to link up with technology, for example, once we are able to do branchless banking in its real sense, uh, we will start seeing the uptake on savings. Because savings is the insurance against the current crisis that poor households are facing. And we believe that is really the way forward.